Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about the service class in general and how we can create a service with it. If you've watched my last video about intent services, which I really recommend doing before watching this video, then you know that an intent service is created by inheriting from the class intent service. And the class intent service is actually a subclass of the service class, which I'm going to talk about in this video. The UI layout for this video is very similar to the UI layout we had in the last video for intent services. I just added an edit text where we can click on this send data button and send data to our running service. So make sure to um, set it up like I did here or similar to that and then we can jump right into the video. So in the last video about intent services, we created this my intent service class here that inherits from intent servers and this time we will do the same but we will inherit from just service. So let's go to your um, project package, create a new Kotlin file or class, and I will call it my service. Make sure to select class, press enter. And this class will this time inherit from service and not from intent service anymore. And we also don't have to provide a name for this service as we had to do it for the intent service. But what we have to do is we have to implement on bind, which is a special function of the service class. Each service class needs to implement this on bind function, but you will probably not need this very often. Um, it's just a method required if you have multiple clients that want to connect to your service at the same time. And if you don't need this behavior, then we can just return null in this function. So in Kotlin, we can actually do this in one line. So it doesn't take up much space in our class. So the main difference between a normal service like we do, it, like we have it here, um, and an intent service, which we created in the last video, is that this intent service will automatically run in a separate thread, so it won't block the main thread, but this intent service won't support multi-threading. If we create a service like we have it here, then this service class will support multi-threading, but it will run in our main thread by default. So therefore, you should always manually start a thread when creating um, such a service here, because otherwise your UI might freeze. But I will also show you that, that this is actually the case. Now let's start by creating a simple tag for our class to probably lock um, debug messages. Um, val tag is equal to my service. And then I want to go into the init block. And here we can just uh, print a log message that just tells us that our service was just created and is running now. Um, here we can pass the tag and print um, service is running. A very important function for services is on start command, which we will implement here. Um, this on start command function will be executed and it is used to deliver the intent we started this service with. So by overriding this on start command function, we can get the intent we started the service with and we can also attach data to that intent to communicate from our activity to our service to, for example, send commands and make our service do different, st uh, different things in different situations. In this example, I just want to get the, the data string attached to this intent, so attached to the intent we started this service with, because we will attach the string um, we, we will put in this edit text here, and re when we click on send data, we will send this string to our running my service, and we will just print the string here to, to, sh sh to show you um, how we can actually send data to a running service. So let's start by writing val data string and we get it by writing intent dot get string extra and I will call it extra data. Then we can check if this data string is null. So if, if we start this service for the first time, then we won't attach any data string. So in this case, this data string will be null. So we need to make this null check here. And if it is not null, if we go into this let block, then we can simply print this data string. And 
Then what we have to do is we have to choose a return value for our onStart command function. We don't want to use this super onStart command implementation. Instead, we want to choose between um, three different values we can return here. And each of those will affect how the system, the Android, the Android system, will treat our running service. So in general, our service will keep running once it is started until we stop it by ourselves. But if the Android system um, needs resources, then it might happen that the Android system kills your service and not you will kill your service. And depending on what we return here in onStart command, we'll choose over how the system handles it if it kills your service. So one return value is start not sticky. That means if the, the Android system kills your service, then it won't recreate it if it has resources again. Then we, of course, have start sticky. This means if the service is killed by the system, it will be recreated when possible. And the last intent, so the last intent um, passed to this onStart command function won't be redelivered. And instead, this recreated service will be started with a, a null intent here. So then this will be null. And if we don't want this, if we, if we want to redeliver the last intent passed to this service class, then we need to return start redeliver intent. So these are the three return values we can choose from to return in this function. And for this example, I will just choose start sticky. Then we can actually go into our main activity and start our service when we click on the start button. So it's very similar to what we've done in the last video. Button start service dot set on click listener. Here we want to create an intent to start our service with. Pass the context and the service class we want to start. My service double colon class at Java. Call it also on this intent object and simply call start service with it. So with the intent. And we also want to set TV service info dot text to service running. And then we can copy this whole block here and paste it below for the stop button. So this time it's button stop service set on click listener. And in the last video for the intent service, I showed you a way to stop the service by creating a singleton. So we created an instance of this service in its class. And then we could simply call this um, static stop service function here. So we could call this function without creating an instance of this service. This time I want to show you another possibility to stop our service, which is, in my opinion, easier. So we can just create an intent again, which is directed to our my service. And then instead of start service, just call stop service. And of course, change the, the text of the text view to service stopped. And finally, we can do the same for our button to send data. So button send data. Uh, when we click on this button, we want to send the string from our edit text to our running service. And this is actually the same. We need to remove this um, text view text change. And before we want to start this service, we want to pass the, the edit text string to it. So let's write well data string is equal to um, et data dot text dot to string. And then we simply need to call our intent and call put extra with extra data because we called our extra like that. If we take a look in our my service class, we will get the data from the key extra data. And as a second parameter, we want to insert our data string. So the text from our edit text. And then we want to start the service with this intent. And what this will do, if we call the start service function, this will, um, even though our service is still running, so it won't restart it, it will just call this on start, funct on start command function with our near intent that has the data string attached. And in this time, this data string won't be null because we attached that extra data. So this on, on start command function will go into this let block and print that log message. So the text of our edit text, but from our service class. So if we now go into our Android manifest XML 
and press Control D to duplicate this service line here to add our my service. We have to do this for every service we create in our app. Then we can start our app. So I already opened Logcat here and filtered it for my service. And if we now click on start, then our service class will go in the init block and print service is running. And now what we can do is we can go into this edit text field and for example, write hello guys, click on send data, and then our service will receive that intent we sent to it and print the data of it, so hello guys. So we can write whatever we want here and it will simply print the data it got from that edit text. And as I told you, this service runs in our application's main thread. So to actually show you that, I will add an infinite loop here in our onStart command function that will block our thread. So let's write while true and don't write anything in the curly brackets. So if it goes to this line, it will just stay in this loop because this condition is always true. And because it is in our main thread, our UI should freeze. So if we rerun this app, and if we now click on start, then you can see our UI freezes. We can't, we can't click on that edit text, we can't click on the buttons, because our service is stuck in this while loop. And because of that, you should always, if you, you should always start a separate thread in your service class if you have like complex calculations to do. So we do that by writing thread, oops, thread, open curly brackets, put this while loop in there, and call dot start afterwards. And if we now rerun this app, even though we still have that infinite while loop, if we click on start, our UI is not blocked anymore because that while loop is not executed in our application's main thread. So we can still stop our service and restart it, stop it, send some data, whatever we want. And one last thing I want to show you is to, um, to demonstrate you how the intent service class and the normal service class differ if it comes to killing the service. So if we take a look in the intent service class, there I um, explained in the last video that if this on handle intent function returns, so if um, if it executed all the commands in this function and there are no more intents to handle, then the service, this intent service, will be stopped automatically. But our normal service, however, will keep running once we started it until it stops it itself or until we stop it from our activity with this um, stop service function here. And to actually detect that, we can go into our my service class and overwrite on destroy, which is called before our service is destroyed. And here we can simply print a log message. Log D has our tag. Service is being killed. Then we can rerun our app. Click on start service. Our service is running. And we can minimize our app. It doesn't really matter what we do here. The service is still running. And if we go back into our app, we can still send, send some data to our service. And if we now click on stop service, then it prints our service is being killed. But we have to do it manually or um, the Android system has to do it. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there is anything I can improve on, please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful for me and have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.